Are DIY power cords worthwhile? Here are three cables that I have assembled and they all have IEC C13 terminations to them and they come in various lengths from about 24 inches to about 1 meter. There are many brands of power cords to choose from for use with hi-fi audio equipment. They range in price from under $100 to several thousand dollars. Benefits of making your own power cords include being able to customize the length to meet your needs and the potential for lower cost than a name brand product of similar specification. That said, it's difficult these days to compare products based on quantitative parameters such as wire gauge and purity of the wire. Instead, we are offered narratives about copper grain characteristics, alignment of conductors, RF noise dissipation, and the like. In my opinion, the only useful parameter these days is in judging the quality and performance of audio cables is price. If higher prices did not result in higher product quality and performance, buyers would soon disappear and the companies that make them would go out of business. While one can safely assume that a $400 power cord from one manufacturer is better than its $300 cord, one cannot assume it's better than a competitor's $400 cord. Therein lies the conundrum. That may be one reason there are so many used audio cables for sale on online marketplaces. For this project, I selected the DH Lab Encore power cable. What attracted me to this cable was its three 14 gauge conductors made of OFHC or oxygen free high conductivity copper and its metallic shield. Most power cords are not shielded. For your information, this is an AudioQuest NRGX uh, cable and you'll notice there are uh, three wires, 16 gauge, but uh, there is no shielding. Here's a, a wad of old speaker cable. Let's see what the oxidization on this wire looks like. It's probably 16 gauge. You can see there is some light oxidation discoloration on these copper wires. Same with this wire. Oxidation has taken place inside the sheath. Therefore its uh, conductivity has has been reduced. I'm going to strip about two inches of the uh, insulating sheathing material. There is actually a thin outer sheath and a thicker inner sheath. Once the inner sheath has been stripped off, you can see the shielding, which looks like um, an aluminum wrapping and also uh, a multi-stranded drain wire. I'm going to attach the shield and drain wire to just one of the two connections. Basically it'll be attached to the plug and any RFI and EMI that's uh, picked up by the cable is going to be dissipated through the electrical ground. I've unwrapped the shielding foil and you can see there are three probably cotton threads which act as uh, separators for the three conductors. A black for the hot, white for the neutral, 
and green for the ground connector. I'm going to strip about a half inch of insulation from each of the conductors. It should be 14 gauge, so if I use my 14 gauge size, it should be perfect. And it is. I've totally underestimated the diameter of this DH Labs cable. It's definitely not going to fit into this household grade IEC connector. I'm going to use this uh, Schurter uh, IEC connector which has been uh, chirogenically treated and it's been used with one of my AudioQuest power cables. For the IEC connection end, I'm going to strip about one inch of the outer sheath. So I'm going to leave this uh, shield dissipation wire uh, just wrapped around the outside in case I want to in the future to attach this to the ground connector at the IEC end. There are internal markings for each of these terminals and this there's an N here for neutral L for load and I believe G for ground I have to remove uh, another quarter inch of sheathing because I, I can't uh, use the uh, cable clamp to clamp around this cable for uh, strain relief. After some significant effort I was able to use the cable clamp strain relief. The biggest surprise of this project was the thickness of this cable, 14 millimeters. Most AC connectors that accommodate 14 gauge wire handle up to 10 millimeter thick cables. The strain relief clamps of my light duty AC plugs could not fit around the outer sheath of this cable. The light duty IEC connectors I bought could not accommodate the thickness of the 14 gauge wire. Sonic Impressions. 
My initial impression was that the sonic presentation was more dynamic with faster transients. After a few minutes I noticed I was reducing the preset volume levels of my topping preamp because music from my network streamer and vinyl records sounded louder than before. I perceived a bit more bass weight and mid-range richness after replacing the OEM power cord with the DH Lab power cord on my subwoofer. Conclusion Total cost of material for this project was around $70. Despite struggling with attaching connectors to this thick cable, it was a worthwhile endeavor, in my opinion. I am now using two 1 meter lengths of this power cord for my power amplifier and subwoofer. Happy listening.